Hey, afternoon, y'all. What's going on? What's going on? What's up? What's going on? So I had uh, just woke up and everything. I could have talked this could have talked this earlier, but you know it's whatever. But you know I'm just waking up, you know, getting ready and everything. You know, no music. We're just gonna try to get everything into this, you know, real fast because you know time is a wasting. <laughs> so yeah, I'm uh, you know no music, no kickback and everything like that. So I'm just gonna. Uh, my apologies if I just zoom through it. But yeah, uh, seems to be that. Uh, Ember Moon uh, is now getting her spotlight in the news lately, right now. Uh oh, yeah, she's uh, everybody's talking about her. So yeah, we're gonna just go. Uh, so let's uh, get to it, right? And this is about uh, her latest interview with uh, Chris Van Villette, and she was basically talking about her uh, her struggles and. Uh, Basically, her frustrations, her, uh, the, you know, the creative she wasn't liking, and about how WWE told her to dress sexy, and how she was, uh, not, uh, you know, upset about that. So, we're gonna get into that. Probably gonna, uh, cause it's just, uh, yeah, so this part, we're gonna read through the whole interview, but, yeah, this part is basically about, yeah, about her, uh, having frustrations work a creative booking so she said her last four months was just uh where she wasn't having fun anymore yeah basically where it was just going downhill from there it started with Shossie being gone and drafted and then she remembers thinking she was sitting at home and she got a phone call saying hey we don't want you to be upset but Shossie just moved to smackdown she's debuting with t and knox as a tag team then she was uh then she was she says she says she was happy for her. Then the tag team thing popped up. And then they got merged and they doing like yeah, everything was going really great. And then she remember Hunter. I remember go I remember going to Hunter and he was like, I have no clue what's going on. We'll figure out we'll figure it out together. I think this is probably this is basically before the whole reimagination of uh, NXT two point before NXT two T uh, point L became, you know, a clear factor, and then she was particularly forthcoming in regards to backstage political culture and environment created within WWE. How she felt she had to attack, meaning that she, she, uh, she became uh, known with how, you know, backstage the culture, political culture, and everything like that. How dangerous that is, and uh, really controversial that is. And she said the problem she had was some some of the new writers were coming from Raw SmackDown and she they had no idea that her and Shotzi were a tag team. And in the, she uh, a lot of WWE backstage is having to play the game. And then it's cool we get it we're in NXT. It's not like we're front page of the website. We won the tag we won the titles. That's fine. Yes, you're just having to eat the shit sandwich and smile with shit in your teeth a lot of times. It's all about not making waves. Huh. Then he said, following the dissolution of her tag team with Shotzi Blackheart, Moon worked with NXT leader Triple H and staff to point her career in a new direction. Then he said, me, Hunter, Triple H, and the head writer at the time had come up with a doing a heel turn with me because it was new and different. During this process, we went through a losing streak. That was my thought. I see the new faces coming through and part of my job at NXT was to help new talent on TV. I love this business so much that I didn't mind let me do a losing streak. Let me get frustrated and let me turn. This is a great idea. And then the first match happened. And I'm off TV for four weeks. Don't worry, we got this. And then Hunter disappeared. Hmm. Following this move was due to Russell Saray on the August on the 10th of August 2021 on an episode of NXT. But was pulled from bout due to illness. The ambiguity on her role and direction and in the company continued to grow with conflicting messages being delivered by WWE coaches. This, then one of the head coaches goes, Will you do me a favor and work 205 Live with Coral Jade? We like her and she's a sweet girl. We think this will be a fun match. You two are in the main event. Cool, that sounds great. I'm never going to say no to having a match on TV regardless of where it's airing. We have a fun banger of a match. They go, you're turning in this match, but we want to make it subtle. They kind of turned on me, but they don't. There was confusion about what would happen. 
then she was off for another three weeks of TV. Then she had the match with Mandy, and they're like, we're finally pulling the trigger on this. I get a note that week saying, in two weeks, we need you to dye her hair. So this was, uh, like I said, uh, yeah. This they, so I guess basically they wanted to go back to her other her other character. I don't know anything about that, but they wanted to go back to her basically. I saw uh, like snippets of it, but yeah, they basically they wanted to like, you know, I guess uh, you can call it going back to an old character. Basically, yeah, the old Urban Moon character. This is per Vince. Or going, then they wanted to turn her heel. They wanted to, yeah, they wanted to like basically get everything uh, when she first started in the NXT, I guess, and then make her heel. And then she said, uh, would it, she would work with lead NXT writer Ryan Cass to produce Neil content for the character, but unfortunately continue to face political obstacles and decisions out of her control outside of her control okay then she says uh when she shows up to tv she got the video ready and she's ready to show you know she's ready to be back and then she got bad news vince uh pulled her off tv basically uh, yeah uh, like right yeah indefinitely like she is she's about to be off tv forever and then she like, yeah, she was completely uh, distraught, upset. What did I do wrong? You did nothing wrong. I've done everything you guys asked me, and I've gone over and above. I switched up to TV. It's 2 a.m., and I'm like, I've done everything you asked me to. I, I branched out. Wow. I don't know if that's branching out, like going back to an old character. I don't mean to be, like, snide, but, yeah. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what's that. Well, you know, probably people has different versions of branching out, but yeah, this would prove to be one of the final straws for Moon in her decision to leave WWE, as she would go on to detail her unhappiness at some of the changes being implemented and things female talent was being asked to do. Then she said, I remember going to my female makeup artist and saying, I am so happy. We have to sit through stupid meetings about how we have to dress sexy. I remember looking at someone and laughing. I cater to children. I'm not about to wear fishnet booty butt cheek shorts, but we had a two-hour meeting about how to dress like Manny Rose. That's not fair. Manny is an absolute phenomenal, amazing person, but not everyone is Manny Rose. I started seeing this down slope as soon as Hunter was gone. Damn. For the first bit, we didn't know why. We just knew he wasn't there. I get so angry. I was sitting there thinking I did nothing wrong. I didn't, I didn't piss off Vince. They take Shasti away. Hunter is gone. You guys promised me this wouldn't happen. You promised I wouldn't be lost in the shuffle. I went on a delusion streak to help you guys out and build other talents so I can get a reward, she recalled. Then they tried to, uh, you know, they was talking it over, but she was still pissed, upset. We, then they said, we still want you to come and help the next generation, maybe teach a class. So basically, <laughs> they wanted her to become a coach. Yeah, I'll say everything what I need to say. I'm trying not hard not to. But yeah, this is fucked up. It's like, this is really fucked up. Yeah, so... You're taking me off TV and trying to make me a coach. She remembers laughing. I've done nothing wrong. You can cancel all my flights. I'm not coming to help these people who do not care about what I do. They only care about the paycheck that hits their bank accounts. They're not passionate like me. I'm not going to come up here and help these people that don't care about what we do and when there is no benefit for me and when I've done nothing wrong. And I'm giving you my entire right side of my body. And between my elbow surgery and Achilles surgery, I'm giving you this entire side for no reward. Not even a thank you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> try to redo this and I'm like <laughs> losing strain you want me to coach and take me off TV to coach I remember sitting there and I got teary eyed and I said I'm not coming up here to coach or do PC shows I was supposed to co come to NXT to repackage and go to the main roster that was supposed to be within the year but I'm still here moon added I'm going home cancel all my fights cancel all my hotels if you have a flight there and have no creator for me I'm not getting on the flight I'm not doing this anymore because I'm going to snap. It's either going to be on you or on the, ta the talent. I'm going to go home. If you need me there, I had to have something for me. Even then, I need to approve the creative before I hop on the flight. And then she continued to, you know, talk about everything else. 
But yeah, basically, I think that's all we need to uh, talk to yeah. So, yeah. And I had I had talked about her. That was with uh, Thunder Rose and everything like that. But, and uh, I don't think I, I remember going off for her. Probably just on uh, Thunder Rosa. But I can kind of figure that she's in, the, you know, that culture. You know, the, uh, I, I'm not trying to say that. Well, we'll probably have to wait for that. Go Like, going uh, forward to see if, like, whatever she's a part of. But I can, yeah, I can probably definitely get... Most definitely, likely get a, a hint that she's a part of that culture of, you know, a part of, like, the, you know, the feminist culture and just, the, uh, the like, the, you know, the Me Too culture and not being in just, uh, of where we have to stand up for ourselves, you know, misinterpreting uh, that word. <laughs> you know, I just get a sense of that. I'm not saying that, I'm not, you know, ignorantly, you know, going out here and saying that, I'm just, you know, that's what I, that's what I sense, so, and then talking about, okay, uh, like, the old NXT, the old NXT, okay, the old NXT, <laughs> going back to the old NXT, I had never watched, because I told y'all, I was pretty much disconnected that, by that point, I was not watching the old NXT, or WWE for that, uh, you know, <laughs> as a whole, you know, from like, uh, especially after Punk left, I was really uh, disconnected and just completely away from WWE. Well, starting in the 2010s, I was already, uh, by that point, I was not watching WWE at all, so. But, yeah, I was only watching Punk's run and everything like that, but, yeah, I was pretty much disconnected. I was even more disconnected, you know, starting in 2015, and I was like, well, before Punk left. And I had, it's really, yeah, it's really, like, it was extremely weird. Because Triple H, he, you know, when you think about how he, of how he built up Batista, and, you know, how he helped, had helped build it up with Batista and Randy Orton, like, clear bread winners. It's like, you would automatically think, yeah, like, Triple H knows what to do. He's a bona fide star. And he knows, obviously knows how to create stars as well. And it's like you go to his full work, basically his baby, NXT, starting, I guess you could say, I want to say, like, 2016. It's like, <laughs> when you get to NXT in 2016, I'm going to watch it, you know. But it's like, I look at that and hear so much about that. And hear how, the you know, the... Uh, and how the ones that's like, you know, the, the side of the community of uh, fans or the wrestling community that talk so much about the wrestling, the ring in-ring aspect and praising about how it's so much the golden era of NXT and how Triple H was getting it back on track. Then I look at it and it was like, <laughs> what golden era? It was just NXT... From 2016 to 2019 was basically, it was basically essentially AEW. That was what it was. It was essentially what any indie, you know, low budget indie market on the market was. Like that's what NXT, you know, when and with Triple H was running under. It's like oh, it's like it's and that was completely like that was completely like I was completely like wow surprised by that because Triple H. Like, he knows so much about characters, and he, like, he's one of the greatest characters of all time. And it's like, when you get to that, it's like, what the, he's, like, was part of, like, he's become the, I mean, he's always had a hand, like, somewhat, but even more so. So, it's like, it's like, damn, it's like, you making the, pro, like, you're not also, are you just contributing, the more even so contributing to the booking side and creative, just everything, but... You're all, you're just, you're one of the main culprits of why, you know, wrestling, mainstream wrestling is at, a, it's at the point where it's at. And, yeah, I remember thinking that, and now thinking it now, it's just like, damn, it's just like, and, like I said, I never, coming to Enter Moon, I never know what she is and who she's about. I know nothing about her, but, you know, <laughs> I was never, 
you know, I was never also, I'll say that right now too, you know, I was in the camp, I was never a, a fan, I didn't care about NXT being a third, a third brand, because the whole point of it was to get wrestlers over, right, it was supposed to be a developmental brand to bring up talent, so, like, all that shit, all that other shit doesn't matter, <laughs> It's like I completely get her frustrations because, in a way, uh, cause you have, of course, you have the ones that so what want to be about that's liking the concept of WWE trying. They're probably trying a small first, but they're still trying to have the women be in a way that's sort of like you know filler and you know just be eye candy for the men. You know, kind of the same thing is for men, but like I said, I've said that, kind of said it before also, too. I'll probably talk about it much more later in the future, but I've said it before, and I can say it again. Like, yeah, it can, that, that shit should be, it can be like, you know, I guess snippets of it, and if like everybody is okay with it, but it's like, that doesn't need to be the main focus. Like, <laughs> like, uh, like, obviously not. Like, the main focus is obviously, you know, the characters, their stories, into like that, that, and you know, whichever goes into that. Like we don't shouldn't care about the other things, but if, you know, of course, we, uh, you know, clear cut weirdos <laughs> with small dicks is gonna come down, and so like oh, oh shit, sex appeal draws, sex appeal draws, <laughs> and it's like all that other shit doesn't matter. It's like when you really think about, we all, all we should be focusing on is the characters and the stories. That's it. That's your all and and the wrestling. It cut all that other shit. It comes second fiddle. All that shit. Other shit doesn't matter. So yeah, I would completely. I completely believe this too, because you know we all like even more stories coming out now about how Vince is really how you know how uh, Vince is just real shoddy and you know disrespectful to certain even just like even like uh, some top talent like you know Bret Hart. And, uh, Kurt Angle, like, <laughs> that's just how he is, especially to the woman, he treats them like they're just completely, just like fish, and, like, naked fish, and, yeah, I completely get what she's, uh, talking about, and that's fucked up, how he wanted to take her off TV and just completely make her into whatever they was gonna do with her, and what they wanted to do with her, it's just, that's just, and it's just, that's why I like to it's just, First, they wanted to her go back to her old character, and now you want to make her a coach. It's like that's completely fucked up. And then you release her because you don't want to do. She's not don't want to do what she like. You obviously become a pet, and you know basically an assistant. So it's like that's fucked up. Then that's fucked up. And she was basically had to start her career, and it's like that's what you're gonna treat her as. Wow, that makes no no sense whatsoever. But, like I said, I'll say again that, you know, just, like, like, you know, of course, when it comes to, like, this, uh, this, like, you know, the women being sexy again and having those sort of, uh, that sort of content about, you know, women wrestling or, you know, women wrestlers being, uh, like, what Trish and, you know, you know, women, uh, you know, just, like, uh, just girls, like, the females and, uh, like, Stacey Kleebler and Trish started. Like all that, like I said, like even if and if they're okay with it, like that could be probably like a little bit shown, not where it's like a f focal point where it shouldn't be a main focus. But yeah, if like good for you though, if you like want to see that back or just like what it's like, you know, interested in seeing that back or want it like there shouldn't be a clear factor or no, she should do this, man. We want like sex appeal draws <laughs> so I can jerk off. Like, just kudos to you. You're a fucking congratulations. You're a fucking weirdo. Like you're a, like you're a self obsessed, <laughs> no pussy getting weirdo. But like for the other people like me, of course, like rest actual and just who wants to actually focus on the like like the characters and you know the wrestling. Of course, the rest the stories, the characters and the wrestling come after that. Yeah, we want more of that, and we want to go back to that. So I could stay over there and jerk in silence, but yeah, it's like I said, it's pretty ashamed, it's fucked up how they how she was treated on her way out. You know, she's not, she, you know, she's 
not the first, and she's definitely not going to be the last. So, yeah, it's pretty fucked up. And how you know how her her career is where was is going right now? How it went? It, how was it going in WWE? And uh, yeah, that's all I have to pretty much say about that. And just you know, yeah, it's like it's always like. It's, I heard a lot of stories about like this, so yeah, I, I only wish the best for her. But this was your latest on commentary with uh, the Cosmic Originator, and I'll see y'all much out. Stay blessed, y'all.